Hi YouTube. Say hi YouTube. So um, this is going to be just a quick update about why Veda um, completely stopped after like day four, I think it was. Um, and obviously I got really sick and we ended up um, in the ER in California and uh, had to stay overnight. Um, the 24-hour observation after. Um, I'll do. I'll upload a video with some pictures and stuff um, about it, or maybe I'll add it to the end of this video. Anyways, um, so Mauricio had something called in interception, and it's when the intestine, the large intestine, goes into itself like a telescope. Um, it's super painful, and it just doesn't feel very good. It causes obstruction um, in the bowel and it could be really really dangerous if not caught early enough um, so we g thank goodness we caught it early enough and they were able to do a minor procedure um, instead of the major surgical procedure that sometimes in interception requires but I guess I'll just tell you about um, about it um, so it was uh, the Saturday or no Thursday night it started. Um, he was really fussy and didn't really want to go to sleep. He had a lot of gas, um, a lot of tummy pain, and I mean he's always had that since he was little. Always had tummy pain, so we just thought it was normal. Um, gave him some tummy calm and then put him down to sleep. And he finally went to sleep after he was somewhat comfortable. Well, that morning he woke us up with the worst. Mo oh, it was a piercing scream like he was just in so much pain it was awful and then he wouldn't wake up all the way he was really lethargic so he was still kind of like asleep but barely opened his eyes and he would scream and then that would last like five minutes and then he'd just like pass out like if he was so tired and then it would happen again and again and then so we tried to walk around with him put him in the stroller do the things that we normally do to calm him down and when I realized he wasn't waking up, um, Tina and with me were like, oh my gosh, there's something wrong. So we called his pediatrician, and it was taking a while, so we decided, you know what, let's just take him to the ER and have him looked at. Better safe than sorry. Well, thank goodness she did call us on our way there to the hospital, and we told her the symptoms, and she said, yeah, take him to the emergency room right away. Um, so we did, and of course we get there, and we get the world's stupidest doctor ever, I swear to God, and I wanted to punch him in the face. But we get there, they check us in, they see that he's just not feeling well, and the doctor's like, oh, well, he looks okay, I think everything's going to be okay. Yeah. And I'm looking at him like, this is not him, he's not ever like this, there's something wrong with him. And then the nurse comes in and she looks at him and she says, there's, his color is not very good, like, I'm really concerned about him. So then the doctor was like, okay, well, let's just do a glucose test or, you know, to check to see his sugar. So they did. They poked his foot. And, you know, babies hate that. They start to cry. It's painful. They don't like it. Well, he didn't even flinch. He didn't cry. He didn't make a noise. He was just so lethargic. It just didn't phase him. So then he's like, oh, well, he didn't move or cry or anything. So I guess, yeah, I, I better be concerned and I'll go ahead and send him to the back. But he was ready to send us home because he just was, like, writing us off like nothing was wrong with him. And, I mean, thank goodness, as soon as we got the other doctor and I explained all the symptoms and he looked at him, he said, we need to get an ultrasound, this is what he could have, and we'll talk about it after the ultrasound. Sure enough, we go to the ultrasound and that's what he has. And I was like, I just was so angry, and Tina was too, we really wanted to go out to the waiting room to the triage doctor and just cuss him out because he was about to send us home. And there was something wrong with the baby, you know? So then they came in and explained what was going to happen. They said they have a minor procedure they can try to um, push the intestine back out, and that's a barium enema where they put a tube um, up into the rectum and push air and water through the colon into the intestines to push it out. If that worked, then we would be okay, and but he'd still have to stay for 24 hours because it could happen again right away. But if that didn't work, then he'd have to go into surgery and have it manually taken out. And uh, 
So, you know, of course that's scary. Nobody wants, to, no parent wants to hear that your child might have to have surgery. Um, so they got him his IV in, um, gave him some fluids and stuff, and then we went in for the procedure, which was awful, of course, for us to go and see, and I couldn't hold his hand or be there next to him. But we had to watch behind the glass and the door because it's radiation. And it was just, it was awful. It was awful to see. It was hard for me to keep it together. Um, but he didn't cry or scream or fuss about it. He was really calm um, about it. And he, so they, the lady said, oh, it got done. It's worked perfectly. So I'll send the results to the doctor. The doctor came in and said, it worked. We're going to keep him for observation. So we're going to send you upstairs. And so we went upstairs to the um, children's hospital for overnight observation and you know that was rough because he couldn't eat for um, oh, it was like 16 hours or something I'm not sure what the hours were but he couldn't eat for a while um, and then they were slowly going to introduce it so they would give him Pedialyte and then he could have breast milk so they brought me a pump and let me pump and get um, store my milk so he had something to drink but of course he was hungry screamed his head off um, they finally had to come in and give him some medicine to help him relax because he just was upset that he couldn't eat. They gave him uh, Pedialyte and he drank that and we went to sleep for a while but around like 6 o'clock in the morning he was angry. He didn't want the Pedialyte anymore. He wanted to breastfeed. He was hungry. I felt so bad because it's like the first time I've ever had to deny him food and not give it to him. So they finally came in and said, okay, he can have some food. So he was so happy when he was able to breastfeed again. And then we got out of the hospital about four or five hours later. So he's doing much better now. They said a month, it could still reoccur in a month. So we're still just watching him and keeping an eye on him. As you can see, he's got blue everywhere. He's got uh, that gentil violet in his mouth. He's, his uh, thrush is back. So that's crappy. But that's why we haven't done beta. It's, we've gotten home and we've been trying to just get situated again and get with this doctor and everything. So today's going to be the first video. We're going to do it every day. And I've got some videos to upload from our trip to California. So I'll do those. And then also I'm going to do, um, I'm going to vlog about our sleep training and how we're doing that. So that's what there's to look forward to. Sorry, this one is so super long. But um, that's, I wanted just to explain what was happening. So we will see you guys later. Bye. Say bye.